What's up you guys? I'm Natasha. This is the kitchen garden at Shepherding Peppers Farm and today it is time for another weekly garden tour. So I have a ton of peppers to harvest and I mean a ton of peppers to harvest. Uh, the thought of it is just wild. I wasn't actually planning on coming out and shooting the garden tour today because we traveled to visit family yesterday and I'm a little bit worn out but it's cool. There's a breeze it feels like fall at the moment. And I'm like, all right, today's the day. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna harvest the heck out of things, the peanuts, if I get around to it, which hopefully I will, but the priority is the peppers and the peanuts. And then showing you this amazing garden that I love so, so very much. So let's go take a look at things. We're gonna go all the way to the end with all the peppers and we're gonna kick it off. If you're new to the channel, we are growing here in Horry County, South Carolina. This is growing zone 8B. Ah. My camera just got stuck on a watermelon. <laughs> um, we have 18 of these four foot wide, 24 feet long, three feet deep raised beds. And I tend the garden here. I grow everything from seed. For the most part, I did get given a Thai pepper plant for Mother's Day this year. Didn't grow that from seed, but everything else, that's all me. And the garden is one of my favorite places in the entire world. So we're gonna get right to it gonna be amazing the way I'm gonna do this because as much as I love shooting garden tours I do have a bunch of stuff that I have to get done in the next few weeks I'm gonna show you what I am harvesting I'm gonna show you the plants I'm gonna harvest them after I show them to you I'm gonna try and keep my peppers separated because I have different purposes and we are starting with the hot peppers we'll get to the sweet pepper bed in just a little bit right here though these are my sugar rush peach peppers. If you've never grown sugar rush peach peppers, they're pretty spicy. They're about as hot as on the low level of a cayenne, so 50,000 schoolgirls, all the way up to a low level jalapeno habanero, which is 100,000 schoolgirls. So they've got a decent amount of kick on them, but they are exceptional. They're so good. They're called sugar rush peach peppers because they have a high sugar content in them and they taste very sweet with a mild peach flavor so they're excellent in things like spicy jams or hot sauces we just made a round of this um in a, a recent video that we did the kids loved the sugar rush peach pepper hot sauce that was pretty much their favorite so these are great i grow these every year they're my favorite version of a spicy pepper they're right on par with a jalapeno because jalapenos are so versatile and cayennes i do love cayennes getting ahead of myself let's look at the peppers so we've been harvesting these peppers very frequently. Sugar rush peach peppers are one of the few peppers that I am pretty intent on allowing to ripen on the vine because they get sweeter and hotter as they ripen. So as these have ripened, we've been harvesting them. You can see the plants are massively tall at this point and in a couple more weeks, we should have another round of these to go ahead and harvest. Won't be harvesting many of these today. However, the habaneros have come in and oh boy, do they look beautiful. So I need baskets. I'm gonna start with baskets. I'll probably work these into bags um, because I have so many different types of peppers that we grow that I don't have enough baskets for all of them. And I wanna keep them separated for the purposes of seed saving and for knowing the purpose that I want to use them in. So habaneros, oh, it's windy. Hopefully that doesn't affect the audio too much. If we come around right here, these are some hot paprikas. You can see these ones grew to be really large and lovely. These ones look really, really good. So we're gonna harvest these in just one second. And then right here, these are the serranos. So serranos are typically harvested when they're green, when they're about this size. Different types of spicy peppers have different culinary uses. So whereas most peppers you'll harvest in their red stage, that's when they're the sweetest. If they're sweet peppers, that's when they're the sweetest and the spiciest. If they're spicy peppers is when they have fully ripened. But with certain peppers like serranos and poblanos are harvested in their green stage 
most often for culinary purposes. It doesn't mean that you can't harvest them when they're red. It's just most commonly used in its green stage, like jalapenos. Jalapenos are most commonly eaten when they're green. But if you allow them to turn red, they're much spicier, their flavor is much more intense, and if you go ahead and smoke them, that's a chipotle pepper. So I have a ridiculous amount of serranos to harvest. We love serrano peppers. We eat them fresh all throughout the summer. It sounds a little wonky, but my 13 year old is absolutely obsessed with serrano peppers. And what I meant earlier when I said I was going to transfer them to bags is I put my habaneros in here. I have all these mesh bags. I will sometimes use these as grocery shopping bags in the garden. I will also use them to hang my melons from on trellises. I'm gonna put these in the bags so that way they're nice and separate from everything else. I know exactly what's what. It'll make things easier for me. So I can't harvest it directly into the bag though because it's just not, it needs to be a more expedited process. So let's go ahead and harvest these serrano peppers. I'm looking for them to be around this size, three to four inches. You can harvest them when they're smaller, like this is about an inch and a half, but the flavor profile isn't exactly the same. Maybe this will just be the pepper garden tour, who knows. Okay, this is a ripe one, save that for seeds. Often with peppers, you'll find the bigger ones start out on the bottom, so it's helpful to get down at different levels and harvest them, especially if the plant has grown to be quite large. Like this one has put on a lot of weight. There's also some grass in there. Yeah, here we go. Definitely gonna need a couple more baskets over here on this side while we're harvesting for the Fresno chilies. So these are Fresnos right here. They look very similar to jalapenos. They make a wonderful chili crisp. That's primarily my use for growing them. Although they have other purposes as well, but I do have different plans for different peppers. This is a poblano on this side. It's a little bit smaller. I do see one that's kind of red down there that will, sometimes poblanos just don't get as big as you'd like them to. That happens with peppers. You can also see that this pepper in particular has a lot of yellowing on its leaves, like it's struggling to get nutrition, which can lead to the peppers you're harvesting being much smaller. We've had a lot of rain recently, which is good in some ways, and in others it's harder on pepper plants. So I would probably feed this looks like it could use it. All right, so I'm gonna harvest these just cause it looks like the plant is struggling and I'd like it to bounce back and refruit. So we're gonna harvest all those, even though they're small. These are some hot paprikas and I'm gonna throw these in with my serranos for one second. I'm letting these turn red. There was another one, right? I saw another one somewhere. It was over here. At this point with the peppers coming in so well, I have to be out here harvesting them about twice a week if I'm looking for red peppers. If I'm letting things ripen, it can take a little bit longer, but if I'm specifically wanting to keep up on the red peppers, I do have to harvest them regularly. So more serranos.
All right, over here, we have another Fresno that is showing up, looking lovely. I'm harvesting a few of these, green and a few red, just for kicks. There's no real reason other than the fact that the plant looks really heavy and a little worn out, so I felt like I'd help it a little bit. Most of the time, the peppers do an outstanding job of holding themselves up when they're planted closely together. But occasionally, your bounty is just so much that even the typical process can't withstand it. So that's a blessing. And I'm not really that worried about it. They're doing fine. We're rolling in the peppers. So I'm just not concerned about them falling over a little bit right now. Fresnos have a good amount of heat to them, typically somewhere between like 25,000 to 10,000 skull bills. I could be off on those numbers. Um, and if so, I, I write all the descriptions in here anyways, so you'll know exactly what it is. Um, but I try to be able to recall most of it off the top of my head just because I've been doing it for so long. Um, but yeah, so Fresnos can be a bit spicier than a jalapeno. So if you're looking for something with a little bit more kick than a jalapeno, but you don't want to go up to like the cayenne level just yet, Fresnos are a good option. They're really nice. All right, so over and through here, we have another section of poblanos. These are growing and looking really good. You can tell this plant isn't nearly as yellow on the leaves. It's not wilting at all. So not only are we seeing more peppers on here, but they're larger in size. I'm gonna harvest a good bit of these poblanos right here. We have the poblanos. All right, over here, this is a hot wax, a Hungarian hot wax pepper plant. This is very similar in a Scoville rating to a Fresno chili. We're very, very close. I believe it's around the same 25,000 to 10,000. So these are the close cousins. This is a little devil right here. This is a stink bug enjoying a sample of pepper. And to know more. Goodbye, dude. All right, over here. In the back over here, we have some guajillo peppers coming on strong. The guajillos look really lovely. We've got lots more peppers in different places that I'm excited to take you to and show you. And then we're going to get into jalapeno territory. So this, my shining star, my Megatron jalapeno. This isn't even one of the largest ones that we've gotten. And then all in through here, these are Craig's Grande Jalapenos. Look at this. <laughs> Craig, you don't look so grande anymore, my fine friend. So not, not that all of them are that small. Like here's a couple of them that look okay. I had planned on doing a bunch of chipotle peppers, like letting them turn red like this and then smoking them. And although I do still intend on doing that, my Layla, my oldest, was like, Mom, we are out of creamy jalapeno sauce. And I was like, okay. And she was like, Mom, no, it's not okay. You have to make more. So I'm out here and I'm going to harvest a lot of jalapenos. A lot of them. I'm very excited. So we're going to have some pepper preservation videos in the near future. What did I just step on? We're gonna start with the Megatrons. I'm gonna put this part on a time lapse for your own good and my own good. This is just gonna take forever. I will say Megatrons, Craig's Grande, and then these little suckers are the orange spice jalapenos. These are really, really good. They're about 3,000 Scoville's hotter on average than the hottest jalapenos. So they've got a, an extra punch to them, but these are fabulous. They're a little bit smaller, but they're really good. All right, I've made an executive decision. I'm gonna take you around and show you the rest of the garden, and then I'm gonna harvest because otherwise this garden tour is just gonna be me picking peppers. So <laughs> let's look at some other stuff. So this stunning creation, these are our loofahs. Love my loofahs. I'm running low on them, which caused me a great deal of stress because I don't use sponges in my kitchen. I use loofahs. 
They are exceptional. They replaced all different sorts of items in my household. So I find that being without them is really not an option. The sheer number of loofahs that are on this trellis is outstanding. I mean, loofahs are great. I can't recommend them enough. Now over here we have a little patch of melons. See how well they do when chickens don't destroy them? It's amazing. We have um, this right here. These right here are honeydew melons. You can see them here and here. We come down a little bit further. We have some kajaris right there. This is a Santa Claus melon. This is an exceptional variety. I really enjoy the Santa Claus melons. They're really very good. More honeydews. Right there as well. So honeydews mixed in with the Santa melons. Hanging out, looking great. Oh man, so tell me again that um, roly polies don't actually eat your, your melons, huh? That's a load of malarkey. Lies. They tell you lies. They tell you that the roly polies do not, in fact, eat your plants. They only eat the compost, and that is completely not true, as I've shown time again on the channel. And for me, I'm an evidence girl. If you can prove what you're saying with facts, I, I want to see them. I don't want to hear your opinions as much as I want to see facts if it's pertaining to something in the plant world. I prefer evidence, personally. Um, so there you go a lot of people will clout that they don't actually eat your plants they just eat the the compost in the beds like the wood chips and the plants that are breaking down no that's not true oh you're beautiful look at this melon right here oh it's off of its thing hopefully it's okay no oh, i guess not it probably came off because of damage but look at this gorgeous Amish melon right here. That's what that, this is. This is an Amish melon that is gross and smells flippin' awful. Anything that's composting smells just rotten. So, but yeah, these are Amish melons right here. I was flipping these over in hopes that the critters would leave them somewhat alone. We'll see. Then some me lose some. All right. All right, these all look really good. When we come over here, you can see that even though we harvested the sweet potatoes, they, we must have left a few slips in here and they're trying to regrow like always. Sweet potatoes are super resilient. I did come in and plant some cucumbers this last week. Over the next week and a half, I'll probably be putting a lot into the garden. There is so much grass in this bed that I'm going to have to have just a grass pulling day. It's, it's preposterous, the amount of grass that is growing in this bed. But the artichokes are happy and thriving, which I am very glad about. Love the artichokes. They prefer to not be overcrowded. They don't. Over here, we have our tomatoes that we propagated together. These look good. This right here is a um, atomic grape tomato. And I'm not really sure what these are. I won't until we see some fruit mostly because I didn't label what we propagated. I just kind of let it be what it was going to be, but these look nice. They look really good. I'm proud of the propagated tomatoes. I mean, look at this guy. He's all the way at the top of the trellis. Lovely. Hopefully if it cools off a little, we'll start getting some more fruit. This right here is going to be some variety of a beefsteak. You can tell by the size of the blossom. It's quite large. These are my favorite pink zinnias. So beautiful. This mix that just touches my soul every time I see it. I'm letting a lot of these go to seed. I'd like to be able to offer these on the website too. I think that'd be a little piece of my favorite part of the garden right to you guys. So these all look great. I need to harvest these. Still a little traumatized from last week. So I'm watching where I'm stepping. You can see this is probably where it got me. You can see this, the soil difference right here as we come down. But definitely I think the ants were in through here. But look at these giant zinnias. That's the size of my hand. It's outstanding. So good. Got some tomatillos in through here. Looks like a few of them are ripe and ready. Look at that. That one's a little bit overripe. Yeah, that's a tomatillo that you want to save for seeds for sure. So I need to look through the tomatillos and see what we've got over here. This was a volunteer tomatillo patch. I did not plant this, so I'm happy to see it's thriving. Now over here, got lots of the 
Marisol peppers, these need to be harvested. I'm gonna use these as a drying season blend for peppers. So these have been fabulous. These are good little producers. I mean, look at these clusters of peppers all in through here. I'll have these seeds on the website for you too. I feel weird saying that because we've never had a website or anything like that. So I'm just like, oh yeah, this will be there too. This is interesting to me. So I'm going to put it there. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's look at these plants some more. My hair is doing something super funny with this wind. Alrighty then. That's fun. Over here we have a guajillo plant with some ripening fruit. We're going to harvest those. This is my habanada. You can see it's nice and light in color. It looks slightly different than your traditional habanero. I'm really excited to try these. Really, really excited. Because if you love a habanero's fruity flavor, but you don't enjoy the heat, habanada is excellent. This right here is the Tobago seasoning pepper. Awesome. I'm ready to harvest some of these whenever the plant produces some ripe fruit for me. If you're a fan of the fruity flavor of those hot peppers, but you don't want to totally light your mouth on fire, you can grow a habanada and enjoy the fruity flavor without all the heat. So that's great. Over here, we've got a whole little cluster of mini bells. That just came right off. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest that too. I'll harvest a lot of these mini bells green. We'll make stuffed mini bell peppers over there. That'll be tasty. And then more mini bells all in through here. This, this whole patch is mini bell peppers because the kids really love miniature bell peppers. So these are really good. And then over here we have some cubanelles. Cubanelles are lovely. They're really, really great. They're a lighter green. They're just wonderful if you fry them up and dip them in aioli sauce. They're really good. Got more of them back there. And then a few leisure sweet peppers. This is the giant purple hyssop just showing off and being outstanding. I've got a few seed pods that are ready to harvest. This is my loofah trellis. The loofahs are starting to dry out, which is great. I let a lot of these go to seed because I was low on those and I wanted to have more. And this is the purple catnip. No, this is the blue catnip right here. I'll need to harvest some of this too. All right. Over here, our Venezuelan tiger peppers are ripening and just looking gorgeous. I tasted this for the first time last week. This might be one of my new favorite peppers. It's very fruity and flavoring to the point that I was expecting there to be heat. I was like, okay, they say that this variety is not spicy, but it has too much of a fruity flavor for it not to have heat following it up. And it didn't, and it's exceptional. Outstanding. Venezuelan tiger peppers. One of my new favorite sweet peppers absolutely fantastic i love them love them love them they're so good i need to set these down mm. i'm chewing on this pepper and trying to shoot a garden tour it's a tough combination <laughs> over here we have some wonder balls it's more venezuelan tiger peppers probably won't make it in the house i'll probably eat them all and then we have some mini bells back here that are ripe and some more Wonder Bell peppers. What are you? More mini bells. We have the red mini bells and we have orange mini bells over here. These were saved from a grocery store seed variety pack of yellow and orange miniature bell peppers. I'm being super careful to save the seeds. Down here we have some Ash County pimento peppers. Wonder Bells. See, look at all these beautiful red peppers. So excited. Yay. And then the Pippin's Golden Honey Peppers. And the Chorty Shirtos, which are wonderful for making sweet paprika at home. Look at all of these. I just can't. There's so much fruit in here, you guys. It's amazing. We're going to be spending all morning out here. My family's never going to see me again. These are luscious sweet peppers. And then we have um, giant chocolates right here. And over in here we have the elephant ear peppers. I mean, look at this. Oh, I love this garden. It's so exciting. 
Oh, I'm so excited. You're beautiful. Yay. Ooh. We have some black peppers and some monster yellows that aren't so monstrous, but that's okay. At this point, I don't even care. I'm just walking around like full of joy in my heart at all these ripe peppers. I'm so excited. I really am going to have to focus so Hopefully that works out. <laughs> Over here we have some ripe sauce tomatoes. All along this trellis, we need to harvest these. Kind of flopping over. Everything's a little bit out of control. We did a lot of maintenance in the garden and then it just grew back healthy and with vigor and I haven't really done much to maintain it. You can't do everything. This is like a jarry man. And tomatoes. My friends. Oh my gosh, look at this gorgeous thing. Please, please, please don't be ruined by bugs. Please, 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 please. Oh, look at that. See proof right there. Evidence. Evidence. I, I don't know what this is, but the bugs are certainly happy. You guys suck. Dirty jerks. How rude. I'll throw it over. The goats will get a kick out of it, which as long as they're happy. Who doesn't like happy goats? Well, since I had to walk back to throw that over, let's look at what we have here really quickly. So we have cayennes all in through here. Loads and loads and loads of cayennes for our cayenne pepper sauce. Um, and then we have Buena Mulata hot peppers down here. But these are the, the long thick cayennes. I want to save some seeds for these, possibly get those on the website. We'll have to see. Um, and then we have the Buena Mulatas all down and through here. They look lovely. Back here, these are Detil peppers. These are the same Scoville rating as a habanero, but they are, they're a really great upright plant. You see how tall these grow and it's all vertical and it kind of supports itself. It's really nice from that standpoint. We have guajillo peppers in through here. These look really good. Good job, guajillos. Way to show off. You look great. Um, so yeah, all of these look outstanding. They're doing a really good job. These little beauties are my arbol peppers. I'm so excited. I hadn't seen any fruit on these yet. So these are, these are another spicier variety. They're used in a lot of Mexican cuisine. They're lovely. So good job. Woohoo. Have to harvest those. These peach zinnias are some of my favorites. I've been really enjoying this color. It's just this like soft pastel pink. I'm getting really excited to harvest everything now. So I think I'm probably talking a little bit quicker and just getting a little bit more like, Ooh, it's time to go. Let's harvest everything. Um, these are clearly delicious because they are being eaten by bugs. So, Hey, feed the wildlife. Look at it, it's caterpillars. It's always caterpillars. They're everywhere. These are army worms right here. Actually, that's what's doing all this work. I should probably spray this plant down with neem and fact this entire area but I'll get around to it when I get around to it. More tomatoes over in through here. Is it good? We got some banana melons that are growing. This is a Tobago seasoning pepper. Hanging out, showing off, really lovely. I'm not sure my Aros Compolos ever really bounced back and then when they started to, the banana melon was like, too bad. This is my space. I'm a bully. You're going to deal with it. This is all banana melon. It's all volunteer. I had no say in it, and I'm, I just let it win. Pick your battles, right? This is oregano. Whole little patch of oregano. This is Greek oregano. All in through here. This is a perennial. It gets to live here forever. And then this is Italian oregano over here on this side. These are my favorite red zinnias. I love these. Year after year, the red ones are my favorite. I never thought I was a big red zinnia fan or a red flower fan. But the red zinnias just stole my heart, and I love them. All right, so I'm just flick my microphone. To my wonderful viewers, I love you all so much, like genuinely. My regular viewers who comment, you guys are the most amazing people on the planet. You're fantastic. I love you. You're amazing. And to my viewer who said something about this being marshmallow. You're so right. It is absolutely marshmallow. I was convinced because the label said it was a hollyhock. I was like, that's hollyhock. It has to be the hollyhocks. What is going on? You are so right. It is my marshmallow plant. 
You are amazing. Thank you for pointing that out. I, you saved the day. You rock. Thank you. All right, you guys, as much as I could take you up and down and show you every other little thing in this garden, because trust me, we could go on forever. These are blanket flower right here. Over here, this is the rose mallow that we started from seed together this winter, along with our echinacea. A lot of this is flowers. We all started from seed. See, I'm, I'm, I keep going. <laughs> our snapdragons. I really do have to get to the harvesting portion of this. Oftentimes, I end up harvesting by myself. I basically kind of tend to the garden on my own. People will help sometimes when they can or when I'm really obnoxious about it. They will come and help me. But the girls are doing schoolwork, and Seth is assisting them with that since he knows the garden has to be harvested today. So I'm going to button up, and we're going to harvest the heck out of some food. And hopefully, I don't chat too much and make this the longest garden tour in the history of long garden tours. I was so excited. All right, lots of time lapses here, okay? So that way I can fit everything in. Maybe next year I'll have to do the garden tours in sections. Like, the, the this half and then this half, that way it's, I'm able to go into more detail about everything because there are oftentimes things that I pass over quite frequently because I get excited to show you one thing and then I'll, I'll run out of time and I'll be like, oh, okay, I should just wrap this up. But there's lots of little things that would be really great to talk about. So something to think about for the future. All right, let's go.